Welcome to the Revive Podcast. Thank you for listening. We are changing up our format a little bit. We are going to start the episode reading through the scripture that we will be talking about. After that, we will continue our discussion. Mark 3, 7 to 35. A great crowd follows Jesus. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the sea, and a great crowd followed from Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem and Idumea and from beyond the Jordan and from around Tyre and Sidon. When the great crowd heard all that he was doing, they came to him. And he told his disciples to have a boat ready for him because of the crowd, lest they crush him. For he had healed so many, so that all who had diseases pressed around him to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirit saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. And he strictly ordered them not to make him known. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those whom he desired. And they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles, so that they might be with him, and he might send them out to preach and have authority to cast out demons. He appointed the twelve, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, Andrew and Philip, Bartholomew and Matthew, and Thomas, and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home, and the crowd gathered again, so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he called them to him, and he said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they were saying, He has an unclean spirit. And his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mothers and my brothers? And looking about at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mothers and my brothers. For whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. Welcome to the Revive Podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. You just heard the passage read that we will be discussing today. It is from Mark chapter 3, verses 7 through 35. It's always wonderful having you listeners join us and, and walk with us as we unpack the sermon and just see how it affects our daily lives and what it means to us. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that the Word of God is relevant and helpful in all time, even today. Just like Psalm 138.7 says, though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. So each week we create and curate resources to help people thrive in Christ. That's all available on the website at neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. Well, it's a great day today. We are joined by Christine Theodore. Hey, Christine. Hey, Sean. Thanks for having me today. Yeah, yeah. So good to have you back. You were with us maybe a couple month, a month ago, a couple months ago, I think it was. And yes. yeah, yeah, that's good to have you back. And that was your voice reading the, is that right? It was my voice. <laughs> yeah. I have to practice my teacher voice. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> and also, Justin, you are back with us. I am back with you. I enjoyed the week off, but it's good to be back. Excellent. It's good to have you back. It's, it's fun to do it with Christine. So that's it's fun yeah. serving with her every Sunday, but I have a first podcast together. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. It's, and for those of you listening uh, at home in our audience, we're going to try and get um, some different combinations uh, of people. I know we have uh, Mike and Justin frequently, but... 
we're going to always try and uh, bring in other uh, perspectives or other, whether it's staff at the church, maybe some lay leaders, uh, just to have a little variety. I think it'll be fine. But uh, moving on to, to our conversation today, as you heard, we read through Mark chapter 3, verse 7 through 35. And uh, uh, as you were listening to that at home, uh, those of you listening, um, we hope that it kind of settles with you. There was a lot of content there, a lot of some historical stuff, some question mark stuff, and um, yeah, just uh, some general questions that I want to start for Christine and for Justin, just kind of big ideas. Um, family, people, so, so we were kind of talking about people following Jesus, you know, who, who are these people, what does Jesus' actual blood family look like versus to who he's calling his mother and brother and sisters, and so curious for you guys, just to get down to the basics, what is family to you? Like when you think about the word family, what does that mean? Justin or Christine? <laughs> um, if you have something off the top of your head, okay, no. So um, I think for me, um, the first thing I think about is certainly biological. And I'm grateful yeah. for that, you know, that, that I have a good relationship with my family so that it's not a negative trigger or anything like that. So, yeah, you think of the people you grow up with. And so I guess if I were to abstract that a little bit, I'd be thinking about, you know, heritage and history mm. and um, kind of the ups and downs of life together, taking care of each other. Yeah. Um, putting up with each other, you know, sharing kind of the highs and the lows yeah. of life is kind of, you know, if I move it beyond the biological, but kind of connect it to that, those I think are some of the, the critical things I think of. Yeah. And I think in history, and, and, and we're seeing it a lot today too, that there were often times where people not your bloodline happened to be family or you, or you had those caring and nurturing and, and situations that necessitated a familial type connection with people. Yeah. Christine, any thoughts on your end? Yes, I agree with Justin. I think we first go to that biological family, which, yeah. you know, I would say my husband and my four kids, and we've had the privilege of adding three additional family members by marriage to our children and a couple of grandchildren now. And so it's neat to see that uh, in small family mm. growing. Yeah. Uh, but I also think about the people that we have adopted, hmm. you know, um, people who might be orphans nearby. And so we've brought them into our family for holidays and, and other things and kind of grafted them in that way, yeah. which has really been a beautiful thing. One of the uh, things we applied when our kids were little was whoever was at our house at dinner time sat at the table with us and ate. Oh, that's cool. And just tried to demonstrate that. So yeah. I guess that's always been there for us, which we yeah. learned from my mother-in-law. That was how she that's, handled yeah. guests in the home. So everybody was made to feel welcome. Yeah. And hearing you say that makes me think about when I think of family, I th we were family. I mean, we were a, a modern, you know, family pretty, you know, we were doing stuff, you know, and active and going out. But I, I through high school, as, as young as I can remember, through high school, dinner time was dinner time. And we had to sit at the table, had to have meals together. And just something as small as that, you know, was so formative and so connecting. And we would have to talk and have to engage. And and I value that so much for my immediate family. And, and then to have that pass on, you know, like when I was going to college, it's like, oh, my roommates or the guys on my dorm, we would eat dinner together regular, you know, and see those patterns and those regularities. That's so, yeah, that's so cool. And then talking of adoption, that's something, Christine, that you spoke about. That's so biblical, you know, New Testament, you know, we won't diverge <laughs> too far into a, you know, Pauline theology or anything like that, but adoption is huge. Um, and it's about that family tie. And so for those listening, if you're anything like me, and we got to the end of this passage that we read through, Jesus seems to have some harsh words for his own family, but it seems like there's a point to it because Jesus is always making a bigger point about how we do life, what the kingdom of God means. So yeah, curious, Christine and Justin, how does that sit with you? How Jesus kind of gets to this point in our passage where we see he adds to his followers, the disciples, you know, he's having this rough interaction with the religious leaders, the people who should know what's going on. And then we end the passage basically like, oh, these aren't my mothers and you know, brothers and sisters. These guys are. Right. How does that sit with you guys? Is there a tension there? Because I don't know for you listening at home, there's a tension there for me, if I'm being honest. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, well, I think there's a tension for a lot of us 
And, and so I would say, yeah, I think I've, I've sat with it enough. And I'm also uh, geographically detached from my family. So, yeah. so in some ways, it's like that's kind of how we live in a sense you know, to a certain degree. Yeah. But it's, it's beyond uncomfortable in the original context. Like it's scandalous in that context, you know, where there's no social security, there's no retirement program. Mm. Your kids take care of you. Um, and your social network is largely family. Like, yeah. you know, if you don't like your brother or sister, it doesn't matter. You're still stuck together. And, yeah. and that's your most significant peer is your, is your siblings. So, um, so when, you know, yeah, it's uncomfortable for us, but we're just scratching the surface as, you know, kind of as we are westernized and individualistic or, yeah. and, or nuclear family focused, um, that it's, it's a really big deal. Um, yeah. And, that's, so, and yeah. It, it brings up uh, to mind, and I'm sure Justin, you've, well, I think uh, our church, maybe you read this too, uh, Christine, there's a book uh, by Joe Hellerman called When Church Was a Family. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I think a few years ago, the neighborhood church read yeah. through it kind of together. The staff did. Yeah. Staff, yeah. 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 And that, that really harkens to that, the, yeah. the familial connection, especially back 2,000 years ago. And yeah. really throughout old human history, right. you know, that was very, it's, it's very a thing of the last maybe hundred, couple hundred years yeah. where, where it's kind of, we've had the luxury mm -hmm. to be like, oh, I'm going to start my new family unit here that looks yeah. like X. Yeah. Whereas brother, sister relationships, those were like super strong right. um, and very impactful. But yeah. yeah. Any thoughts, Christine, on your end? As I listened to you both talk about that, I was thinking back to when our children were very little and we were in a Sunday school class at the time for adults, other small fam, other families with small children. And yeah. we'd gotten into this habit of always going to Sunday lunch together. Mm. We'd pick a local restaurant, one that was very child friendly. Usually we could sit outside and the kids could run amok. And yeah. there were probably a dozen kids between mm, our wow. families. And I'm not geographically far from my family, but at that time, they were a little farther than convenient. And yeah. I remember slicing my hand open, preparing Ooh. dinner. I had four young kids. My husband was not home. I couldn't get a hold of him. Oh. And I called one of those families and I said, can you bring your daughter to babysit yeah. and can you take me to the hospital? Oh, yeah. and, and that's what they did. And mm, I think that was yeah. a beautiful example of how they stepped in and they were those people that I needed. And yeah. I loved that I felt comfortable enough to call them. Yeah. 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 It's those shared experiences I, that brings to mind. I, uh, <clears throat> when I was out of, right out of college, um, I had a really good group of friends, a pretty large group. Um, sadly, one of our friends passed away. Um, and I remember um, processing through that with, um, with my friends, uh, a few in particular. And, and, and we were friends, you know, it wasn't like we weren't, um, we were already close as friends, but that, that like sharing that experience of that trial and, and processing through it together, like, pushed our relationship into family, you know, realm of, of like going through those hard times or calling up, I'm having an emergency right now, you know, yeah. I need your help, you know, and that's, I, I love the phrase, like, that's what family does, you know, and there's all these, you know, I mean, there's all the jokes that you hear about, like, you know, like the Godfather, never go across the family or whatever it is. <laughs> I, for those of you listening, I've never seen the Godfather. I. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Maybe we'll, we, I won't put that in the show notes. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, and it won't be a church outing. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it won't be church movie night. <laughs> but, yes, yeah. But like the idea of family and the depth, you know, and all this like intrigue and everything like that. And we get to this spot with Jesus and he's, Putting, turning that on its head, but for a theological purpose, for a deeper meaning where, mm -hmm. where there is importance to family. Family helps each other, right? It's not about mobsters or things like that, but mm -hmm. it's about the mission of, mm -hmm. of God and the kingdom of God. And Justin, you gave yeah. uh, the sermon at the Los Alamitos campus yeah, this yeah. past Sunday. And so what, what kind of was that connection for you and even elsewhere in the passage as, as we read through? Well, that was four days ago, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're I'll have to really, really reach back. No, but I think, yeah, that that's, you know, Jesus is um, singularly about doing what the Father has called him to do. And then the results of that is, you know, obviously he loves people. And, and so... 
um, as we look kind of wrestle with what does this mean in the family piece it's it's really restructuring things so that we recognize what's most important i remember we read uh tim keller's counterfeit gods several years ago and and the thought of family being an idol is was pretty scandalous to some of us we're like we really had to hash that out like wait a minute this is what god's entrusted me with yeah and and that's the purpose of it right is that we get first things first so mm. that we dedicate ourselves to God and then that affects the kind of parent, sibling, son or daughter we are. And so I think that's what Jesus is, is doing here is he's reordering saying, I'm about my father, capital F father, mm -hmm. his business. And so that reorients everything. And, and we're, we're studying, um, Luke on Wednesday night with the Baptists we, we, we yeah. at the campus where we meet yeah. and so we're going through some of the genealogies and 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 actually it was John the Baptist that we were looking at and you know he's like uh, telling people you can't rely on your lineage to um, get you in with God you know and um, and Jesus says the same thing I can raise sons of Abraham from these stones you know I think it's in John 8 um, I hope I'm right. <laughs> Show notes will correct it if I'm not. <laughs> but um, but the point being that you know Jesus is saying, hey, it it, it starts with a, a real relationship you have with God, and it isn't based on your lineage. And and so in the overall arc of salvation history, we're looking at going from a a faith that's centered on the customs of Judaism, and and now Jesus has opened it up to everyone, mm. and. Then with this, we see not even his mom gets a pass. Mm. You know, not even his brothers get a, sisters get a pass. Like Jesus' own very much blood, even they don't get a pass. They need to trust him, yeah. you know. And um, so I don't know, I'm not even sure I answered the question anymore. I just started no, talking. <laughs> so, but um, <laughs> really, yeah. But uh, yeah, the, 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 that that statement that God doesn't have any grandchildren is, mm. I think this is what it's saying um that's interesting huh christine thoughts on your end it looks like you have some notes <laughs> from i don't know if that was from sunday there uh, yes i'm just reviewing my story that yeah. you know we taught this same lesson the same passage to the kids and how do you bring yeah. these philosophies these ideas these statements of jesus that adults wrestle with yeah. down to a kid level that totally. they can grasp and um we focused on, I focused on two things when I talked with them. One is being a true believer, not just believing mm. who Jesus is or that he is God, but that next step of actually asking him to forgive us of our sins. And we called that being a true believer, having true repentance that we're walking away from our sin and that that's what makes us a child of God. Yes. And so then kind of broadening that to, gosh, everybody sitting here who mm. has done that, they've asked Jesus to forgive them of their sin they are your brothers and your sisters yeah. You're trying to make that picture a little bit more tangible for them and yeah. and hope that that lays some groundwork so that when they are adults and they wrestle with this passage yeah they, they can, they can capture that and yeah you know we know jesus was not truly disowning his physical family yeah yes and then yeah. as you have part. mentioned yeah. you know that was not the point of what was going on yeah but trying to show that bigger picture and I think that's a great point because oftentimes, and, and by nature of the Gospels themselves, it, we have to remember that these are vignettes, you know, of, of instances in Jesus' life, even in the Gospel of John, you know, mm -hmm. he talks about, you know, if we recorded everything and we told all yeah. the books in the world would be right. filled with this. Yeah. But it's kind of like a microcosm that has that point, Justin, that you were hearkening to and, and Christine, that it, that this this is graspable for our kids on a level that's that can be... A, achieved you know like they can they can understand in a way of like hey this is adding to the family and this is making it bigger um quick plug and then i want to take a, a bit of a not a left turn but maybe a, a north east turn or something okay. like that um a quick plug uh miss christine uh, leads our children's ministry. If you're listening um, uh, and, and you're not attending a church right now, uh, come to church Los Alamitos um, in the show notes. I could put the, the address of the church, um, but also even better uh, if you're totally out of the state or something like that on YouTube, you can go, you can search our YouTube channel, Neighborhood Church Los Alamitos, 
and uh, and we have our services online, but we also have the children's story or the kids' story we call it. They're short little seven to ten minute vignettes where Miss Christine um, uh, leads in uh, short messages like this for the kids. They're they're visually uh, uh, stimulating with the flannel graph, which is super fun. They're interactive in a sense of sound and and, and visual, so it's great. So definitely go to YouTube. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Incredibly thorough too. You don't just have to be a kid. It was I was corresponding yeah. with Christine, and I'm like, you ask questions I don't even think about, you know, and so, um, which is fantastic. And and I was talking to, you know, while you're while you're typing show notes there, Sean, uh, I'll continue the commercial. Yes. But um, but I, we had a family uh, come, and they're homeschooling, and so uh, I had mentioned to the mom who has a younger child that oh we have like 80 of these of Christine's stories online, you know, and so it's a, it's a I mean it. It, 80, so we're looking at almost two years yeah. of going through the Bible in kind of a cyclical way. So uh, you'll get a good chunk of Bible um, for you, for your kids, but also for you, of uh, a, a good overview of a lot yeah. of the, the great stories. And and she's brave enough to even take on those parts that aren't stories, like this, <laughs> like this last Sunday. Like, yeah. And yeah. she does a great job. So. Kind of broad, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Justin yeah. and Sean. Totally. Well, and, and that that uh, so so going from that, um, and especially speaking of wrestling with this, whether we're a kid or we're an adult, and this is totally applicable um, for those listening. You know, and and, and I think a, a number of us are blessed uh, in the sense of, oh, okay, our spouse, we're, we're all believers, or our whole family, or our kids are believe. Okay, that's great. But what happens when? maybe not all of your family are believers. What happens if maybe you marry someone who's not a believer or you try and raise your kids in the church and they just want nothing to do with it and they grow up and do their own thing or, or, or aunts and uncles and, and brothers and sisters? How do you process that? Um, especially for those listening, if some people might be wrestling with that, what would you tell them in that moment? And I know that's that's a pointed question, and, and, and we're going to wrestle through this. For those of you listening, as, as we're talking through this, this is a big topic. So, yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you? I can jump in on okay, that. Okay, go sure. ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, I think we just cannot begin to discount the importance of prayer. Mm, yeah. And that in any one of those situations, um, I have those in my family, we pray. Mm. And we just have to trust that God will work that out. You know, it's very clear in the New Testament that it's the God who draws anyone to Christ mm. and into a relationship. And we just need to be praying for them yeah. and trust that he will work that out. We prayed for, uh, I think it was 26 years for my father-in-law to come to know the Lord. And he accepted Christ two weeks before he passed away. Wow. Yeah. But it completely changed his death for us. Yeah. Because we, we absolutely know we will see him again in heaven. Yeah. So yes, pray. Yeah, it's all good. That's awesome. Yeah, I think prayer is a, a powerful one, and and I, I this is a hard one for me to answer because it's I can only answer in the abstract, and it's not because I have it together or my family has it together. It's that they're so far away that mm, yeah. my interactions are primarily just reconnecting. Yeah, and and it's it's fairly large, so you know when. I, the folks I camp out with when I go home are my parents and, you know, and my siblings, you know, my brother. So uh, I don't go necessarily to that depth with the cousins and whatnot. So, so prayer is, I think, a critical piece with that. Um, you know, and in terms of, I'm going to pivot a little bit so you can, you can course correct me if I'm going the wrong way, but you know, my kids are as, as far as I can tell, and as far as I know, walking with the Lord, but they're also, you know, from, 18 to 14. So time will tell. Like I, I, I can yep. by no means speak as an authority, but I know that I'm so grateful for the role of the church in their life, mm. that they are in a place, and I can't remember, Sticky Faith is the name of the book, that talks about if you have X amount of, I think it's like three adult relationships outside your family when you graduate high school, the odds of you staying keeping your relationship with Jesus intact as an adult and staying mm. plugged into the church grows exponentially, you know? Yeah. And so, um, I'm so grateful for those who have, um, poured into my kids' lives and, you know, they, we haven't had to fight about going to youth group or whatnot because they know there's leaders there that love them and same yeah. thing on Sunday morning. So, um, so with that, I'm, I'm grateful for the church as an extension of our parenting. And in some, some ways, um, 
I wouldn't say replacement in the sense of our absence, but there's things that we just, as parents of teenagers, they don't talk to us about, but we know they're leaders and we don't, we don't break confidence in case my kids are listening. We don't break confidence, but just say, how are they doing? And and they're doing great, you know? And so that, so they can assure us that they're doing all right. And that's, that's a big deal. So, um, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I mean, I pray I don't have to know, but I don't know about major straying, it, um, but we aren't quite there yet. But I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for us getting to where we are, and, and I'm super grateful for the church for that. So Yeah, um, and I, I think that that's huge. Um, it, for, for one, for our youth group, if you're listening, definitely, and you have kids, um, even if they're not going to church or not into it, definitely um, – bring them to our youth group activities. We have a lot of different things going on. We're doing broom ball. I think it's coming up from what I heard on the calendar, but if not here somewhere, and and I think that's just so, it's huge to be in prayer faithfully for these um, family members or friends, whoever it is, and just that that faithfulness to to plug them in at such a young age and to keep that going. And um, we're actually getting to the end of our uh, podcast here, but Again, for those listening, I just want to encourage you guys. Um, one, it's never too late. Um, whether it's for you personally or for your father-in-law or a child or whomever it might be, it's never too late. And I just kind of get the sense, um, and, and Justin and Christine, we can kind of wrap up with this. It's very, it's kind of um, a little more uh, entry level, if I could use that phrase. Um, how does one become a Christian? I know that that's, again, taken a bit of a right turn maybe from what, what, what our topic has been, but I'm just getting the sense if someone's listening to this right now and they have um, a, a friend, a sibling, a, a spouse who, who is not a believer, they, they see them go to church, you know, but, but, but they just don't know how to bring the gospel to them. How do you become a Christian? What, what does that look like? How might they approach them about that? I would show them Miss Christine's videos um, <laughs> yeah. because and I, and I, I, I'm only half joking because, you know, <laughs> it, maybe that is, but um, Christine, you want to walk through your hearts and then I'll walk through my ABC if that's sure. Yeah. I think that um, sure. might be. Yeah. Yeah. Every uh, story I try to include the gospel in some way and the hearts that Justin mentioned are five colored hearts that I've cut out of felt. They are red, yellow, green, black, and white. Mm -hmm. And uh, they stand for the different parts of the gospel. You can say it in just about any order, but I'll go through one, which is acknowledging with the yellow heart that God is holy and heaven is perfect. And uh, we don't have a relationship with God because of our black sin. Uh, Sin I define as the wrong things that we think, do, and say. Mm. And if you stop to think, we do that all day long. White represents being forgiven. So if you believe that Jesus, our red heart, um, did die on the cross for your sins, that he lived that perfect life and could do that and be a perfect sacrifice, um, God promises to wash away your heart and make Mm -hmm. you white as snow. I love that analogy. Mm -hmm. And then we finish it off with a green heart. And green for growing. Grass grows, plants grow, and our job here is to grow in our faith. We talk about that through prayer, through reading the Bible, getting to know God, coming to church, and fellowshipping with other believers. And so I try to keep that in every lesson and toss it around as best you can. And if you can remember the five colors, red, yellow, green, black, and white, you can share the gospel with anyone. So good. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I I often use the same one. I should probably mix it up a little bit, but I have heard of— um, years ago, someone was arguing with their friend and using my ABC. Well, it's not my ABC. I picked it up somewhere along the line. But um, ABC is admit, believe, commit. So you admit that you're a sinner. And, and I say, you know, that's that word grates on a lot of us. But two things. A, it's true. And, it, and it's also um, doesn't mean you're the worst person in the world. Um, but it does mean you're separated from God. You think you rule your own life. You say things that are displeasing and what is it think, say, and do. Is that what, yeah, Christine just mentioned. So it's all of that, and it's admitting that. And um, that's not, uh, as, as much as we don't like to do that, I, I remember reading years ago saying that 
you don't live up to your own standards. Hmm. None of us do. So why would we think we live up to God's? And so, so it's the recognizing that deficit that we have before God. Um, and then B is believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and, and that that is not some random historical accident. It's not something that just happened. It was purposeful. He sent, he was sent in the fullness of time, it says in the book of Galatians. And so he was sent to be a sacrifice because sin deserves to be punished at some level. And so Jesus says, I'll take that. And so he took took our debt in our in our our place. Um, so we believe that. But if we just stop there, w- the demons know all that. And I think even Christine mentioned that within the last couple weeks. Um, so it's it's beyond that. And it's saying, I want to receive this gift and I want to um, submit my life to God. And so that's the commit part. So admit, believe, commit. And, um, and you know, there's <clears throat> prayers you can pray and whatnot, but it's really about the commitment. You know, the prayer is a reflection of what's in your heart. So mm-hmm. sometimes I'll lead people in the sinner's prayer, but if, if that doesn't, if you're just saying it, it doesn't mean anything. It's not a spell. <laughs> it's not <laughs> yeah, yeah. anything else. It's, totally. it's a reflection of what's really happening in your heart. But those, that's, if that happens, if you admit and you believe and you commit, then that's, uh, that's the way to do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. And I, I really pray that that, uh, if, if that resonates with anybody listening, um, with you personally or with someone uh, in your family or a friend, um, definitely uh, have that conversation. Look up some of the resources that we're linking to and that we're talking about and yeah, just see what happens because we believe that God is faithful and he changes hearts and there's evidence of that throughout time. Uh, otherwise, it's been wonderful talking to you, Justin. Christine, thank you so much for being here. It's really great to have you. And for those of you listening, I really hope that uh, your heart was filled listening to our conversation. Uh, as always, you can find us on YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts. We are the Revive Podcast. To learn more about what we talked about today in the show notes, uh, some of the books that we mentioned or the video links, you can find links to those on our website at neighborhoodchurch.com slash Revive. And speaking of YouTube, when you search us, you can search us Neighborhood Church of Cyprus or Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos. We have two different campuses with two different broadcast (laughs) channels there. And we would love to hear from you guys. Seriously, if you're dealing with anything with your family, with interactions, if you gave your life to Christ today, we want to hear about that. That would be amazing. Such a blessing. You can email us at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. We hope to see you next time. Until then, we pray that God revives your soul.